So welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're gonna do a fun test here. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know we're slowly taking our structures off grid with solar. And I have been a huge proponent of do not mount your panels on your roof when you can avoid it. And there's a big reason why. They need maintenance and they need cleaning. So in today's test, we're gonna test a couple of things here. We're gonna clean our panels and see how much we're actually losing. I'm gonna show you the build up there, how much they're blocking the sun. We've got a beautiful day to do it, no clouds in the sky. And we're also gonna test the cooling effect right here. This is something a lot of people don't think about. We may do a future build on this, but I wanna show y'all. All right, y'all, so I get it. Some of y'all do not have the yard space to mount panels, but when you can, I highly suggest you do it. Most people mount them up on the roof and they forget about them for five, 10, 15, 20 years, and they don't see the slow reduction in output. Well, panels do wear out with time, but it's mainly because all the buildup on them and you don't clean them when they're up there. That's not convenient when they're on a house or a shop. That's why I'm a huge fan of putting them down here on the ground. We're about to build another very large on the ground solar array just for this reason. So come up here and take a look at this. We're in Florida, we've been getting tons of rain here lately, but even with all the rain, look at the buildup on these panels. That is pollen and just everything else on them. So the rain can't even wash that off anymore. They're just stuck. So today we're gonna to clean these panels up. I actually have to put them up. We've got major storms on the way and they're calling for a potential hail. Well, that's the kryptonite to panels, isn't it? So we're gonna fold them up out of the way. I built this to do that and not receive any hail damage. But first, since it's such a beautiful day, this is a perfect day to test this. Let's go inside, look at the power input that we're getting right now before cleaning, and more importantly, before we wet them. Cooling panels down typically will increase their output. Some people have suggested, why well, don't I build a misting system in the future? We may do that for a fun project, but right now let's clean them. Let me show you the difference. Just the cleaning aspect and maintenance alone is the huge reason why I like my panels on the ground. All right, so let's come into our solar electric room. Excuse the mess. I test a lot of equipment in here. So what I'm currently running is split phase 240 volts. I'm running two 6,500 watt Orient power inverters right here. And we've got half of that array coming in one inverter, half coming into the other. And you can see, got a little bit of a mess here because I've been testing on the wall batteries. I've been testing server rack batteries. By the way, their most recent battery I've been testing is this monster right here, 11,700 watt hours. This has made a huge difference and what I can run in my shop. I can kick on my big 240 volt compressor now, I can run a welder. This has so much capacity and output here that these don't trip even when running welders and 240 volt compressors. And I was running my plasma cutter and compressor at the same time the other day. By the way, they got some sales going on. I'll put some links down in the description. That's not what today's video is about, but just wanna let y'all know, I always like giving you updates. I've been running this stuff for well over a year, especially that first inverter and uh, love the system. We're eventually, I think, just gonna go with server rack batteries in here and build a much larger system. All right, so let's take a look at input. 867 watts, that's pretty good. That's a 2400 watt array. And by the way, it's early in the morning. You can see it's holding perfect. No clouds in the sky. This one's pulling 874, very, very consistent. So 875 holding plus 866. Let's add that together real quick. 1741 watts at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's really good. All right, so we're gonna make this test happen really quickly so people can't claim, oh, the sun moved and you're getting higher output. We're gonna do all this within a few minutes. The first thing we're gonna do, let's wet these panels down, which I need to do before I wash them, and look at the cooling effect. As panels heat up, they actually lose efficiency. Being it's early in the morning, they're not super hot, but cooling them down with water, believe it or not, will actually jump our power up. Now where you really see this is in the summertime when it's like 90, 100 degrees here in Florida. I've actually tested this before out of curiosity. I just love doing things like this. On a 2400 watt array last summer, I could come out here and cool them off and I typically seen a 100 watt jump. All right, let's run inside real quick and see if that cooled them off enough to see a difference. In the summertime, a quick spray like that does make a difference. All right, it's been literally two minutes since I last was in here. 917 watts. Don't tell me cooling them off don't work. 939 watts. How about that, y'all? 945. 
Wow, y'all, we got well over a 100 watt increase. Now we're at 1875 from 1741. So what's that, 134 watts increase? So now we got a good baseline. Let's run up there and quickly, and I mean very quickly, wash these to see any increase. We'll try to make this happen in like three to four minutes. Perfect day to do this test. All right, let's get all this nasty pollen and gunk off of these things. And to keep from getting any soap scum build up, probably gonna do about four to six panels at a time, then wash it off, then move on to the next ones. I don't want this stuff to dry in the sun. All right, I'm trying to make this happen really quick, y'all, which means I'm probably not gonna do as good of a cleaning job as I could. All right, looks like most of that pollen and other buildup is gone. Oh yeah, big difference between the clean ones and the dirty ones. All right, y'all, I've done this in just a few minutes, I'm trying to be as quick as I possibly can. Make sure I got all this soap scum off. All right. Does cleaning make a difference? 983, we're up again. 1,000 watts. We just jumped up another 108 watts. All right, so I've already forgot the math. Between cooling the panels and cleaning the panels, we just increased our output 10% on this size right here. Now the cooling, we can't really trust that too much, can we? But the cleaning, we immediately seen an effect. Now, I clean my panels kind of often. This is just a little bit of buildup. You know, usually the rain and everything else will clean them, but I try to clean them a couple times a year at least. What about your panels? When's the last time you looked at them? Most people put them on the roof and they forget about them until there's damage. And you slowly get build up and you slowly get a decrease in the output of your panels input to your system and you don't notice it over time. Most people think, oh, it's just the panel wearing out or breaking down because they do slowly degrade over the lifetime of the panel. But with that said, you're probably losing more for the fact that you're not getting up there and cleaning your panels then the panel's actually degrading over a period of time. This is the reason I want mine on the ground. Quick swap out after a potential hell storm like we're getting, quick wire connections checking, a lot less aggravation with code. When you put them on the roof, you have to do rapid shutdowns and other stuff. There's a big benefit to doing it on the ground, but again, I get it. Not everybody can do it. They don't look as good on the ground unless you have the space, and not everybody has the space. All right, so look at this. We just built this privacy fence. We're doing a big outdoor area over here. Look at the room I have now. Again, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Look at how much sun I got. We're gonna put like in another three to 4,000 watt solar array right here that we can either run into our emergency system in the house or trench and run back out here to the shop and add to these inverters. They can handle way more than I currently have. So we're gonna more than double our system. The shop will stay 100% off grid. So here's the other thing you gotta think about. I already make enough power with this system right here to run my shop, no problems. When the sun is out, that's the key. But what people don't often think about, you over panel your system, which we're about to do for the cloudy days, because I'm still pulling in solar on cloudy days, but it's greatly reduced. Well, if I can double or triple what I pull in on a cloudy day, that's that much less times that I have to swap the grid to charge my system. And again, I only do that rarely, a couple times a month. We're blessed with sun here in Florida. Other big benefits to mounting on the ground versus the roof, homeowner's insurance, people. There's a lot of homeowner's insurance that's no longer covering people with roof-mounted solar panels. Roof leaks, potential damage up there, structural damage to the home, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. The wiring, the rapid shutdown requirements, the code. Now, you still may have to have some of that on the ground. There's no doubt about that. But when you're building your system or thinking about solar, I highly suggest try to find a spot on ground that you can do that. There's so many benefits to on ground. There's a couple benefits to the roof too, mainly being out of sight, out of mind. It looks a whole lot better. But again, you're not going to maintain them when they're up there on that roof, are you? or most likely not. Or you're gonna hire somebody and it's gonna cost you a pile of money when you could come down here and clean them in, what, three minutes? All right, so here we are down at the panels that's running this shop. It's completely off grid, 100% and always has been. This is where I'll do all my wood processing, where we have our bulk fuel storage that uses 120 volt pumps. So it's very important that we keep power out here. We have lights and other things as well. 
You can see I keep these panels low on the ground, and these are actually bifacial panels. If you're not familiar with them, we did some tests a while back. So you can get reflection from underneath or from the backside. And because these don't have a coating on the backside, you can see these panels can collect light from both sides. Now, I don't have a hose down here, so we're just gonna focus on the front today, but you see all the buildup, pollen and everything else on these. All right, so let's run over to my system real quick, pull some specs. We'll just run out here, clean them, and rinse them. So we're gonna get the cooling effect as well as the cleaning effect. But let's see if we see a jump out here on these types of panels. All right, so if we come in my little room here, Again, I'm running an Orient power system with a 5,000 watt hour battery, 6,500 watt inverter, plenty of power to run our diesel and gas pumps and everything else out here. So right now we're currently pulling in 611 watts, staying nice and consistent. 615, let's just call it 615. All right, let's run out here, wash these real quick, rinse them off, run back and see if we see an increase from 615. All right. See how quick and easy this is with everything on the ground. I'll come back down and get the backsides of these at another time. So we could see even more of an increase that I'm about to show you, if any, if I were doing the backside, but I might have to rig up a sprayer with some water to come down here and be able to wash all that soap off the backside. All right, let's quickly rinse these off. I should have just enough water to do that. All right, let's go see what kind of effect we got here. Much cleaner panels and a little bit of cooling effect going on with the water. All right, what kind of increase do we see here? Now keep in mind, this is a much smaller system. So it went from 615 to 665. That's not bad. We just picked up 50 watts on a much, much smaller system. So yeah, increase out here as well. Again, cooling effect has something to do with it. But I think it's common sense to tell you when you have a dirty panel, that needs to be clean so it can pull in all the sunlight that it can, well, you're not gonna be as efficient with a dirty panel. All right, y'all, that was a fun little test. So now, thanks to this severe weather on the way, they're calling for major tornado risk in our area, but they keep screaming, hail storms, hail storms, hail storms. Yep, that's one of the drawbacks to solar, no doubt about that. So we're gonna disconnect all this. We've got an emergency backup system in the house. We're gonna go make sure it's fully charged. I'm gonna charge up my system that's out in the shop before I put those panels up. And we may be out in our storm shutter tonight. The beauty of the storm shutter is it's powered off the shop where I have a huge amount of battery capacity. We could stay out there for honestly, a couple of days before we deplete those batteries. All right, fingers crossed we don't get any damage tonight and into tomorrow. Time to break all this down. Thought I'd bring y'all along. I love experimenting, doing fun little things like this. That was actually a bigger increase than I was expecting uh, on that other system, which I mean, hey, any power is free power that we got right here. Cleaning your system makes a big difference. Make sure you set your system up for yearly maintenance. And honestly, I'd be prepared to wash and clean them several times a year. All right, hopefully this helped you as you plan out your future system. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or any other tests that you wanna see. We'll catch you on the next video.